The Nazis, known for their brutal anti-Semitism and the genocide of six million Jews, also stood out for the methodical efficiency of their crimes. Within this framework, the Waffen-SS, an extremely ideologized and trained military force, played a crucial role. These elite commandos, who answered directly to the Fuhrer, carried out the most horrendous missions of the Third Reich. This video will explore the structure of the SS, the requirements for integration, and details about their leadership, delving into the history of one of the most feared and organized forces of the Nazi regime. During World War II, the Schutzstaffel SS, emerged as a dominant and symbolic force of German National Socialism. Established at the outset of the Third Reich, these paramilitary forces diversified into several branches, including the feared Gestapo, responsible for internal repression, and the Waffen-SS, which acted as an elite military unit on the battlefields. With their distinctive dark uniforms, the SS embodied the brutal authority of the Nazi regime representing its commitment and ideology through their emblem of the intertwined double S. Beyond their uniformity, the SS represented the ideological and operational core of the Third Reich, promoting dark ideologies under Hitler's distorted vision. They not only trained their soldiers for combat but indoctrinated them to foster fanatic devotion to the Nazi cause, cementing loyalty based on Aryan racial supremacy and relentless savagery. The SS's iconography, including skulls on uniforms and blood group tattoos on soldiers' bodies, solidified their terrifying image for both the enemy and history. Chilling testimonies from those who lived under their command reflect the brutality and forced loyalty within their ranks, offering a grim and memorable insight into their internal workings. In the analysis of the arsenal used during World War II, the weapons of the Waffen-SS aligned with the military standards of the time, with no major deviations. Among these, icons such as the Luger P08 pistol, famous for its sleek design and combat effectiveness, and the Walther P38, a highly valued high-precision semi-automatic pistol among elite soldiers, stood out. These weapons became recognizable symbols of the conflict. During World War II, the Waffen-SS used weapons notable for their effectiveness and reliability, such as the Mauser Carabiner 98K rifle and the MP38 in MP40 submachine guns, known as Schmeissers. These weapons, chosen for their precision and lethality, reflected the efficiency and brutality with which the Waffen-SS carried out their operations, serving not only as combat tools but also as symbols of their radical ideology. The Waffen-SS, under an ideological delusion of superiority, rigorously selected its members based on discriminatory criteria to form a military elite, considered not only soldiers but also guardians of an extremist ideology. The Waffen-SS aspired to be the ideological clergy of the Thousand-Year Reich, selecting members under strict criteria that included loyalty to Nazism, racial superiority, and an absolute commitment to the cause. They recruited physically fit youths, aged 17 to 22, who embodied Hitler's vision of a superior race. Aryan perfection was essential for aspiring members of the Waffen-SS, demanding two generations of pure ancestry and impeccable physical condition, reflecting Hitler's vision of an elite army. Initially, only 15% of volunteers were admitted to the Waffen-SS, but as the war progressed, recruitment was expanded while maintaining strict criteria. Recruits were intensely indoctrinated, turning them into ambassadors of the Nazi regime beyond the battlefield. The recruitment requirements of the Waffen-SS formed a cast of soldiers that embodied a dark and discriminatory vision, creating a military force feared and notorious for its brutal actions in German history. Heinrich Himmler, a prominent leader of the Third Reich, epitomized cruelty and repression, wielding the Waffen-SS with extreme brutality and racial obsession. Heinrich Himmler, with a deceptively harmless appearance, personified evil under a bureaucratic facade. As Reichsfeer SS, his influence permeated the entire Nazi structure, becoming a key advisor to Adolf Hitler. Under Heinrich Himmler's leadership, the SS executed Hitler's racial cleansing plans, including the Holocaust and the establishment of concentration and extermination camps, reflecting his obsession with a pure Aryan race. Heinrich Himmler, at the forefront of inhuman experiments for genetic perfection, attempted to negotiate with the Allies at the end of the war to save himself, revealing his lack of principles. Captured in 1945, he transformed the SS into a malevolent force that left a deep mark on the 20th century. 
The SS unleashed a trail of brutality and terror in Europe, from mass executions to ruthless repression in concentration camps and occupied territories, leaving deep scars of desolation and cruelty in their way. The dehumanization and brutality of the SS were extreme, eliminating tens of thousands of prisoners in less than a day with mechanical efficiency. Despite the magnitude of their crimes, many perpetrators never showed remorse. Figures like Heinrich Himmler and Reinhard Heydrich, leaders of the SS, embodied the racist and brutal ideology of Nazism, leaving a profound mark on history through acts like the Night of the Long Knives. The cruelty of key figures like Joachim Piper and Kurt Meyer in the Waffen-SS left an indelible mark on history. Piper, known for his audacity and loyalty, became infamous for his role in the Malmedy massacre, while Meyer, nicknamed Panzer, distinguished himself for his skill in blitzkrieg warfare but also faced post-war controversies and trials for his staunch loyalty to the SS. Hans Ulrich Rudel, known as the Iron Knight, was a prominent Stuka pilot who destroyed over 500 enemy tanks and received the Knight's Cross, highlighting his bravery but also reflecting the complexity and darkness of the Waffen-SS, marked by a racist ideology and rigorous military discipline. In addition to the SS, the Heer, ground forces of the Wehrmacht, also stood out in World War II for their ferocity and tactical ability. Although both militias shared the goal of defending the Nazi machinery, they possessed unique characteristics that distinguished them and led them on divergent paths in German military history. The Waffen-SS, with their identity marked by black uniforms and distinctive emblems, embodied the very essence of radical Nazism and fanatical devotion to the Reich's cause. Although they later adopted more conventional uniforms, their reputation for brutality and combat effectiveness never waned. In contrast, the Heer represented German social diversity and stood out for their discipline and determination on the front lines. Both forces, though different in composition and focus, left an indelible mark on World War II military history. The Waffen-SS, the military elite of the Nazi regime, represented Hitler's obsession with racial purity and global domination. To him, they were not just soldiers but a new aristocracy, whose authority was based on fidelity to Nazism and the purity of their lineage. This pursuit of racial perfection led to unimaginable atrocities and left an indelible scar on history. The SS became a symbol of terror and oppression, reminding us of the dangerous consequences of extremism and unrestrained hatred. The training of soldiers in the Red Army focused on resilience, adaptability, and discipline, preparing them to face extreme conditions and a formidable enemy. Despite criticism of Soviet strategy, the soldiers showed courage and determination on the battlefield, contributing significantly to the defeat of Nazi Germany on the Eastern Front. Their sacrifice and heroism played a crucial role in the Allies' final victory in World War II. As the war progressed, the Soviets faced the need to reinforce their ranks and improve the quality of their military training. Despite initial challenges, they succeeded in expanding and modernizing their army, adapting to the changing demands of the conflict. Ideological commitment and determination to defend the homeland and socialism were fundamental pillars in motivating Soviet troops. Through massive mobilization of human resources and intense propaganda, patriotism and fighting spirit were fostered among the population. The death of Lenin and Trotsky's exile triggered a crisis in the communist military institution resulting in the reduction of military careers to a minimum of two years, down from the previous three years. This measure, along with the rapid promotion of newly graduated officers, deteriorated the overall quality of lieutenants and admirals. The situation worsened in 1937 with the Great Military Purge, driven by Stalin, which resulted in the imprisonment and, in some cases, execution of around 30,000 officers, including senior army officials. Stalin's desperate recruitment and hasty training of soldiers reflected the urgency and desperation of the Soviet Union in the face of the German invasion. The lack of preparation and adequate equipment, combined with inexperience and resulting disobedience, created serious obstacles for the Soviet army. Despite these adversities, Soviet soldiers demonstrated courage and sacrifice in defending their homeland during World War II. Stalin, faced with the consequences of his own purge, reinstated thousands of imprisoned officers to restore military order. Among them, the figure of Marshal Zhukov stood out, whose organizational prowess was crucial in defending Moscow and later orchestrating the Soviet counteroffensive. Despite his effectiveness, 
Zhukov gained a grim reputation due to brutal operations such as the capture of the 6th German Army in Stalingrad and Operation Mars, the latter causing huge casualties on both sides. Despite these sacrifices, the Soviet Army managed to recover and withstand the German onslaught. The Soviet Army underwent a notable transformation as it adapted to the demands of the conflict. The combination of inexperienced recruits and veterans in the battalions provided a balanced and disciplined force. With Stalin's withdrawal from military decision-making, generals regained strategic autonomy, contributing to the Red Army's advance towards Germany's defeat. Meanwhile, in a bunker in Berlin, Hitler faced his ultimate fate. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. Stay tuned for more content coming soon.